Hello, Healthy Nurse Connection listeners. This is Leslie Catalano, your host, and this is the Healthy Nurse Connection podcast, where we are building connections to improve the health and wellness of nurses. Today on the show, we have Malia Berkowitz, who is a nurse and a mother, and she has a side gig with an embroidery business. Have you ever tried embroidery or sewing or any kind of craft? Well, the American Nurse Association is encouraging nurses to try out crafting or any of those activities that might improve your health and wellness. Sewing and embroidering in itself has been shown to decrease stress, lower blood pressure, and all those amazing improved mood, all those amazing healthy things that we are always searching for. Hi, and welcome to the Healthy Nurse Connection, where we are building connections to improve the health and wellness of nurses. Hi, welcome to the Healthy Nurse Connection. I am your host, Leslie Catalano, and today we have Malia Berkowitz with us, who is a registered nurse. So we are going to kind of talk to her about her uh, nursing career and what she's up to today. So hi, Malia. Hey, Leslie. How are you? Doing all right. We are potty training at our house today as well. So it's been a a good but busy day. (laughs) Fun. Yeah, we actually tried that at the beginning of the summer. Um, But my little one's only two. So we've kind of like quickly abandoned it. And we're going to just try again maybe at the end of the summer. (laughs) Oh, yeah. No shame in trying again. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, that's kind of a lot of work. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Well, welcome to the show. So I just kind of want to start by getting to know you a little bit more. Tell us a little bit about your nursing career and what you are doing today. Sure. So I first became interested in nursing when I was in high school. Um, My mother went through breast cancer treatments, and I noticed that the nurses were the ones who were really able to spend the most time with her and got to know us as a family and really made a big difference in the whole experience for us. And I thought, you know, that might be something that I would like to do. So I started by getting my CNA license, and I worked uh, at a nursing home in the town that I grew up in. And then I got my bachelor's degree at Millican in Decatur, Illinois, and I really liked nursing. I really found that I loved the time as I got to spend with the patients and feeling like I could be a small part of some of the really big days of their lives. Um, And then after college, I started on a neurology unit. Um, on the night shift, which was wild. Um, It was definitely a learning experience, felt a bit like you're jumping into the deep ends. Um, But I definitely left that experience feeling like if I can handle that, I can handle just about anything. Um, But kind of fell in love with, you know, the brain and how things work. And I really loved kind of seeing the way that medicine changes as new information comes in. And I really liked that. I loved our neurologists, that they were so Uh, fired up about new research and that got me really excited to kind of think about the new things coming for nursing. So after that I started as a patient care facilitator. Um, That job involved a lot of case management and discharge planning. Um, My favorite thing about that was really getting to know the patients and their family throughout the whole journey. So we would usually assess the patient to see how are things going at home before you came in the hospital? Are you getting all of the services and the care that you need while you're here? providing education so that they could advocate for themselves and better understand their healthcare plan, and then helping to make a plan to hopefully keep them out of the hospital uh, when they leave. Um, I really like that. Is it similar to like case management work? It's very similar to case management. Um, Some hospitals kind of combine the roles. Um, So we also had, you know, discharge planners to help with contacting facilities and social workers to help with the social aspect of things. Um, So we were really able to focus on the medical aspect. There was a lot of collaboration with the doctors to make sure that we had a good understanding of what the patient's care plan was. Um, And again, just making sure that they had all the services that they needed. So if a patient told me, oh, you know, I've been having a bunch of falls at home, then I would know you to contact the doctor and see if we could get physical therapy on board. Mm -hmm. Um, And I liked that a lot. I liked kind of um, just helping to make that stressful process a little bit more smooth for people. Yeah. So I did that for quite a while, almost 10 years. Yeah, I really really liked it. Um, And then I switched back in the last fall and I now work in clinical informatics. Uh, This was a brand new area for me. I had had a previous manager kind of tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, you know, if you're looking for a change, I think you might enjoy this. And 
I was, I was ready for something new. Um, and so a lot of what I do now is somewhat similar. I'm just helping the nurses to use the computer programs and helping the people who do the computer programming to understand what the nurses need and how they use the systems. So still a lot of education um, and a lot of problem solving, which I really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Nursing informatics is a huge area. And yeah. I, I met you when you were the patient care facilitator and oh. you just recently, I just learned that you just recently went into informatics. So that's really awesome. Yeah. Wow. It's a lot like the neurology where you're kind of on the forefront, you know, a lot of things are changing all the time and you have to be ready to adapt to new technology. And I find that really exciting. Yeah. I didn't even think about that because the technology changes all the time too. Not. Oh yeah. Nursing. Yes. Yeah. That's one thing that I love about nursing is that it, it changes so much that it's always, you always have to like kind of learn, be able to learn new things and like stay on your toes and be willing yes. to adapt. Well, that's awesome. So um, part of the reason I asked you to come on the show too, is that you have kind of started your own like size side business called Prairie Stage Stitching, which so tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So I do a lot of custom embroidery work. And so my main business comes from making uh, gifts and things for people that have generally names on them, things like that. So I do a lot of uh, onesies for new babies or baby blankets, shirts for kiddos with their names on them. Uh, I did a bachelorette party one, which was really fun with the bride's new name on their shirt. Um, yeah, and that's been really fun. I've gotten to uh, embroider things for a new baby that was getting adopted. And um, my goal is to make pieces that will last a long time and will be kind of part of those big special memories for people. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's kind of like you're using your stitching in a way to like improve and, you know, make people happy on that end too. Yes. Uh, that's awesome. So one thing I thought was really interesting when I found out you were doing the stitching on the side is that uh, the American Nurse Association, you know, are big on nursing self-care and self-care strategies and crafting and sewing is actually something that can help reduce stress. Have you found that in your life or how did you even get started with stitching? Like, why did it even become a thing for you? Yeah, no, I've definitely found that to be true. I started um, because I wanted to make some art for my wall and I hadn't really found what I was looking for. So I found a kit at Joann's for like $6, a cross stitch kit. And I was like, well, I cross stitched when I was little. It's been a long time. I'll give it a try. And if it's terrible, I'll throw it away and no one will ever have to know that I did it. Um, but it ended up being really fun and I enjoyed it. And I was really proud of being able to put something on the wall that I had made. Um, so from there, I started making some gifts for friends who are having babies and just learning new stitches. And I found it really relaxing, um, because it forces you to slow down a little bit. Um, I'm a pretty fast moving person in general. I feel like I'm always kind of juggling several things at once. Um, but with embroidery, if you go too quick, you're going to make mistakes and it's going to slow you down. And so I really like that aspect of being thoughtful about, you know, each stitch and each color. Um, I find that really relaxing. I had um, started by just kind of making things that uh, other people had drawn and um, trying to sew them. And it has been a really fun journey to transition to sewing things that I have drawn or written or come up with inside my own head. Um, finding that creative outlet has been really special for me. Yeah, I really enjoy like, because, you know, we don't really necessarily get to do like the creative side of things with nursing. Um, it's very medical. It's very like straightforward. We have like best practices on how to do things. But when you get to access like that creative part of your brain, it's just so fun. Like it's just yes. a whole nother like feeling. Yes. And that's one of the things that honestly that I love about it is because when someone finds out that you do some sort of art. Um, they usually share what they do too. And so I've actually found that a lot of the nurses that I work with have artistic talents that they don't get to talk about very often. And so um, one of the nurses that I work with on the infusion unit, she makes all of the costumes for one of the local ballet co companies, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some people, um, there's some that write books, some that paint. Um, it's really amazing the range that's out there. And so having something that you can kind of talk about and say, well, this is what I'm trying 
uh, has really helped me to build a lot of relationships with people, with the patients, but also with uh, my colleagues as well. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're looking for something to tap into that creativeness of yourself, uh, crafting is a great way to get started. So tell us a little bit more about like exactly what it is and like what you would need to get started. Sure. That's one of the things that I love about embroidery is it has a really easy entry. Um, You don't need a whole lot to get started. Um, I started with a piece of scrap fabric uh, that I got from Joann's for about $2 and the hoop and a needle and thread and some YouTube videos. And um, you can really learn a lot that way. Um, That's one of the things that I love is just that it's there's pretty low pressure. So if I start something and it doesn't turn out the way that I wanted, it's okay because I didn't sink hundreds of dollars into all of the equipment and supplies. Um, Eventually, you know, you can find other things uh, to change it up and to make it your own, which I also really love. One thing that I've started doing is painting my own fabric. And so I do watercolor uh, directly on the fabric. And I really like that because again, it's very forgiving. Um, I'm not really a painter professionally of any sort, but I like being able to make sure that it looks the way I see it in my head. And it just adds a lot of uniqueness and personality. So I would definitely encourage anyone who's looking for something new to try to, you know, just grab a kit from Joanne's, see if you like the embroidery. Um, There's so much you can do with it. A lot of people think of kind of their grandma's samplers and yeah, absolutely. Those are still sweet and adorable, but I also um, have seen some really amazing abstract arts and cuss words and pretty much anything you can think of. Um, I love uh, the office. And so I've definitely seen some office embroidery that's really cool. So Mm -hmm. it's just an opportunity to kind of think of the things that you love and make them tangible. Yeah. Yeah. When I, um, when you talked about the loop, I think about, you know, like my grandmother sitting there, the little, the loop is like where you make the fabric tight. So you can like thread the needle through. So that's what I'm picturing. But yeah, I'm sure it's come like a long way and there's really like modernized and updated embroidery that you can do. Oh yeah, absolutely. And like I said, it's really flexible. So I, you know, have been able to embroider ornaments or put things on hats or um, you can pretty much do whatever you want. I have a jean jacket that I've been working on just for fun. Um, whenever I have a few minutes adding a little design and it's really um, got a lot of potential for trying different things, um, which is honestly a lot like nursing that you know, a lot of times you start out in nursing and you might not necessarily know what's exactly the right unit for you or the right role, but there's so many things to choose from that, you know, if you start something like I had with the patient care facilitator, and even if you love it, but you're ready for something new, there's always other opportunities. And sewing and embroidery is a lot the same. You know, you can start with cross stitching, but if eventually you want to do hand beading and 3D art, you can absolutely do that too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you are a mom, you're a nurse, and you have this little side business. How do you keep it all? You're potty training a little one. How do you keep this all like balanced? What is your key to success? So I would say having a good support system is really important. Um, My husband, my in-laws, my parents are all um, great assistants whenever we need an extra set of hands. Um, But the nice thing that I really love about the embroidery, especially is that it's portable and so I can take it with me. So on a typical day, I might, you know, work my 10 hour shift at the hospital. Um, Then I'm kind of done with it. I come home, I can really focus on my kids. And then I can take the sewing with me when we go to dance class or swim lessons or art camp or any of those things. And I have something to keep my hands busy while the kids do their things. Um, And I can also do it after bedtime. And Honestly, that's kind of become my me time is after the kids are in bed and things are cleaned up to just sit and do some sewing while watching, you know, The Real Housewives or one of my favorite shows. And it's just it's a good way to kind of decompress after a long, busy day, um, but still get things done and have something pretty to show for it at the end. Yeah, I know. I love that time after the kids have gone to bed. It's just like uh, you can kind of like breathe. <laughs> If you can keep your eyes open, sometimes I'm like, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are some nights where I do about 10 minutes of sewing and then I'm like, okay, now I'm ready for bed. But um, sometimes just like anything, you get caught into it. And I've been known to stay up way too late, you know, finishing a project that I'm really excited about. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, is there anything else you do besides sewing that kind of helps with your mental health or your health and wellness to kind of keep you energized? 
Um, I would say trying to get outside as much as possible. That's something that I made. Um, uh, so every year at our performance appraisals, you have to set goals. And that was one of my goals this year was to try to get outside um, at least once a day while I'm at work. Um, I know that's not always feasible, um, but I try to at least, you know, either eat my lunch outside, take a snack outside, um, just take a quick walk, take a patient down to their, you know, ride, something to get out in the sunshine. Um, and I found that that makes a really big difference for me and for my mood. Um, it just helps to kind of keep things in perspective and just getting that fresh air every day um, just opens things up. And so I've been really pleased with how that's been going for me. And it's something I try to do at home as well, even on, you know, the days that I'm home with the kids. I try to make sure we always, you know, have a walk or play in the backyard or chalk something just to get outdoors, even if it's just for a few minutes. Yeah. One thing that we just added to our family too, and another thing to my plate is that we just got a puppy. <laughs> so as you guys know, I have three boys and now a puppy. Um, but I have found that it has forced us to get outside more, especially because we're potty training the puppy. So it's like, we got to be outside a lot. And so it's really like, at first I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do with puppy? But it's really kind of helped in the sense that it gets us outside and we have to kind of like, just take our time and let the dog do what he needs to do. And we all have like enjoyed it. So it's actually been kind of good just because it forces us to get outside. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing what a difference that can make just getting out into nature and you know, I love being able to take hikes and go out into the woods and things. Um, that's not always feasible at work. And so even just spending a couple minutes, you know, we have at work a little fountain in the little atrium area and just being able to spend a minute to, you know, take a breath, turn my, you know, phone off for just two minutes and take that time to myself makes a really big difference. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I love being outside, even just sitting there. Like once, <laughs> even when the kids go to bed and it's still dark out, I'll be like, let's just sit outside. It's nice. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Good. Well, awesome. Well, is there any other tips or tricks or anything else you'd like to add? I think I would just say, um, don't be afraid to try something new. I've never considered myself an artistic person in the slightest. I couldn't draw a stick figure to save my life. Um, but I happened to find this thing that I really enjoy and have a talent at that I would not have anticipated um, and if I hadn't bought that first embroidery kit, I would never know. Um, and so I'd say that if there's something that you're even just a little bit interested in, give it a try and don't be afraid if, for it to not turn out. That's part of the process and it's totally okay. And so life is short, just jump in and, and give it a try and see if you find something that you really love. Yes. I just want to reinforce that because part of what the Healthy Nurse Connection is about is just trying to figure out what works for you. So try it. If you hate it. It's fine. You don't ever yeah. have to have a needle again. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. But if it sparks something inside of you and you're like, oh my gosh, this is actually awesome. And then go for it. Just keep yeah. you know, showing it to people, make everybody's Christmas gift next year in embroidery, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever kind of helps you with your stress level. Yeah. I think it's Absolutely. great to find new things. Mm -hmm. Well, Malia, it was great talking to you. Thanks for meeting yeah. with us. Always good to talk to you, Leslie. And you have a good day. You too.